Okay, great. Um, well, thanks for being here. Actually, it's uh, it's awesome. I'm I'm using Leon since uh, what is that? Five years? Five something? In uh, actually multiple AOCs, and like we talked this morning, they come and go, but uh, it still helps a lot if you have the authority on your neck and seeing questions, and I think this is what you guys want to hear. So let's do the audience uh, participation part. If you are able to raise your left hand, raise your right right now. Okay? <laughs> so I'm, I'm German native speaker. Um, anyone else? Okay. Uh, English? Spanish? Okay. Italian? Cool. Now, um, about me, flying now, powered stuff like 30 years, dude, 30 years. Uh, 421, flew this one, cool plane, and um, currently DFO at Emperor Aviation, market leader in Berkey Cara in Malta, uh, flying Gulfstream 650, and answering questions from authority on this and that. Um, I want to talk about rules in general, if you doing audits, I think you do. Uh, share my vision and maybe you have something else. Um, some thoughts on how to tackle this. And I'm not going through the whole air ops, but I just picked these Oro and CAT. Of course, there's a bit of NCC, which is copy paste from CAT. But uh, I think these are the most important stuff that you will be confronted when the authority is visiting you. Here we go. Contracted activities, and um, yeah, we we do it like this. We we go someplace. We have uh, feedback forms for the crews, just to involve the crews in auditing, and let's say have the right hotel, which is accessible and not far away, etc., or the right handling, etc. Then personal requirements, Orogen 210. I did not do an overview like how many rules are there and which percentage do we cover with Leon, but that's something. So questions from, from that part here. The sufficient qualified personnel, you can throw personal endorsements at them, tons of. Um, Everybody hates your emails reminding them of, hey, I got homework to do. Yeah, speak up. Nope. Um, to, to some uh, authority guys, it is sufficient just to have it in here. Um, mostly we run another Dropbox to be paperless. The good thing is you can replicate this on, on the Leon app, right? Yes? Uh, I just want to add one thing to this section because uh, actually we recently developed the history of uploads and I think it's a good opportunity to say it right away right now where you are able to upload uh, scans of documents here but the regulation is that uh, you are required to have history of your previous uh, documentation and it will be available in Leon very soon because we are just releasing that so you will be you will have a history link on the right side of this view and you will be able to see all the historical uploads. Oh, that's awesome. Um, uh, some folks uh, just leave more than one in here. But this again is, is, is the, the I, I don't like to do this because if you get asked a question in an oral or an audit, just answer the question, nothing more. So do I have this? Yes. Not, oh, and, and by the way, I had this and this and this and this. Yeah. That's why, but, but the history button, cool. Thank you. Dude, nice. Record keeping. Um, yeah, you can, you can write it down how we do it. The format of records shall be specified in operator's procedures. So it's free play. If you say in your manual, yeah, we do it in Leon, period. You're done. You're compliant. Um, protection from damage. Well, look at his blue eyes, huh? I mean, it's the service are safe, right? 
I think so. <laughs> um, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that basically should cover it. Period of five years. Um, are uh, we doing this with you guys? I think we keep it uh, for as long as possible. I, right now, we didn't delete any single record unless our customer uh, wants to. But normally, we have a history from 12 years behind. So we are fine on that. <laughs> cool. Now, I think you should shout that out in marketing, because that is the biggest fear of the regulators, actually, to lose information that they might be able to turn against you. Uh, yeah, and we we collect data in a completely separate um, server infrastructure, which is, I will talk about that later a little bit, and maybe our CTO will cover that, but you, in terms of backup, I, I think it, we, we are very strong. <coughs> Sorry. Cool. Uh, these guys are new in the edition, what is that, 14 of the AROPS in October or something, September and October. You saw there's a lot of um, AUC, non-commercial. I think it's about 35 pages of new how to do this. If you, let's say, lease and plane and have it NCC or not as something so it can get very complicated. But finally, we got rules on this, if you're not, not knowing this, because most regulators had their own ideas. I mean, the German perspective was also, or ever since, if you have an aircraft on your AUC, you are not allowed to fly NCC. I fly to maintenance. I'm not carrying anyone. This is NCC rules. Gives you credits. Uh, the qualification of the pilots could be a bit lower. But they were weird. So I'm very thankful that the ASA finally got this right. Um, which goes then into um, FDL, etc. Yeah? Is that better? What? It's better. Can you hear me? Should I start at the beginning? <laughs> no! <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Um, again, dealing with endorsements, this is, um, again, quoting these, but it's, it's another section and another AMC material. Um, this is the other view, of course. It's not the endorsements itself uh, with the person, but how to set it. I think everybody knows this. And uh, the subsections that you can actually select is very cool. Facility requirements. Um, I tend to upload feedback forms that we get. And I always say pilots have uh, chosen their career because being a pilot is not actually work, right? It's the best legal way around life uh, to get around work in life. And so they always sit on the sofa complaining and they say, look, write it down, and if you have a complaint about your hotel, bring a paper so we can close it. That's how management works. Um, this is just an example, and I think here's also tons of new stuff coming, as I heard. The distribution of operational instructions. Uh, we set it up um, in, the, in the privileges and add the manuals here. Uh, I think there's something big in development, which is pretty cool. Um, but that's in our working contract, actually, that we say your manuals are in Leon, under your personal profile. Um, yep, this is without delay. Plus, of course, WhatsApp groups or Slack, just to get it out there without delay. Uh, understood the language, so that is that is an endorsement language proficiency, for example, to cover this. Well, the first part with the language. Oh God, yeah. Super dry, exactly. Rectification intervals, the MEL section and the hill. That works pretty well for us with you guys. Um, in the sales section, we have the next slide here. Oh, here's coming, this one again. Wait a sec. I learned how to do How does the crew know if something is broken and they have an operational procedure? 
how do you communicate this? Right? You can call them, and how, it, how do you remember yourself? And we actually do this in the limitations field. If we open up a hill in Lyon, we put the operations procedure right here, which ends up here for sales. Hills, yeah, open, blah, 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 this would be down here. And it comes on the trip sheet. Use. Uh, let me add one thing. Uh, this form you can see right now on the right, it will be extended. We have one customer asking us, or a few customers actually, asking for more fields on this form. And uh, it's also in development, so this hill record will be more uh, <coughs> advanced. That's cool. I mean, it's um, NCC operators that I know, they do have any MEL, but it's not really important because they would never ever write down a defect, right? So what's that good for? But of course, if you want to do it mature, and there might be a procedure that really is important, depending on type that you fly, getting this information across and uh, somebody forgets to communicate it would be really great. Uh, the journey log. Um, yeah, series of flights. This can be uploaded here. I think hopefully you do it. But of course, in an audit, it gets you through this audit very, very fast, right? You say, okay, I want to see this in that flight. You don't have to dig it out from the archive. Bam, you got it right here. Um, I don't know how you do this. I've, I rather fancy uh, an iPad model 18. 2018, which can work with the eye pencil, so we try to be most paperless, and we get the whole briefing pack back, and we send it all up there. So I think you had a restriction of 12 megabyte, but I think that restriction is gone, because sometimes it's getting bigger. Yeah, I think it's it's enough right now. I, it used to be less, like five megabytes, but it's now, I think it exceeded uh, 12 megabytes. Too. Honestly, I don't remember, but if there is any issue, we can, we can extend it, no yeah. problem. So, yes. of course, you can upload those files from crew application, and both from crew application and from desktop application. And usually, we, we have some customers uploading from crew apps and some customers uploading from desktop application. Depends on the customers, but yeah, they usually, the, the, the most and most popular workflow is that crew is just taking a picture and then uh, putting it to Leon so that somebody from operations can put the figures into the uh, the form. Or crew is entering figures by themselves because it's also possible in Leon. And by the way, the crew app will be <coughs> extended so crew will have the ability to uh, enter those information in offline mode, which is right now impossible. But it will be in this year. We are focusing on that because we have a lot of questions about um, possibility to upload um, journey log figures yeah. during the flight. Actually, pilots then have a lot of time, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's it's like uh, getting scanned, learn offline on your phone, and you've got a long flight. You've you got your huge DG course done en route. Why not? Yes? Um, 50 seats, and um, so the pilots uh, couldn't make uh, silly mistakes, for example, entering um, 200 uh, passengers, so that would be limited. Uh, you mean, for example, for, um, for specific fields like number of passengers, right? Yes, for number of passengers or um, fuel quantity. Um, I think there is a limitation on, on number of passengers depending on the w on the settings in uh, fleet profile. So if you if you set that uh, the capacity of the aircraft is let's say 20 passengers, then if you put something uh, something ridiculous here like 25, yes. it will be it will you will have the warning. I think we we did updated this that quite recently. Uh, in terms of fuel. Um, well, I don't think it's a big problem. We didn't think about it, but you're right. I mean, usually when pilots enter these figures, probably that's your experience as well, <laughs> that then you have a lot of mistakes. Um, so 
on one way, <coughs> the one advantage is that, of course, it lowers the workload on um, on the ops department because they don't need to put all those figures to the system. But on the other hand, uh, there are a lot of errors. So we can easily, I think, if there are tendencies to, to put wrong figures there, um, we can put some additional warnings pretty soon. But uh, it would be really um, valuable for us to understand what are those, those typical mistakes are. If it's about fuel, then we'll, you know, we will make a limitation and warnings on, on the fuel. So mm -hmm. no problem on that, I think. Yeah, I'm, I told you what I do, and I told you my opinion about pilots, right? Okay, so um, putting that together, uh, the guys I look after, it's not the pilots entering this because of one mistake on each flight. Man, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. The, just to work after it is is more laborious than just putting it in from right from the front and maybe have uh, have Camo looking over the numbers once a week okay. and bringing that up. If if uh, if if there's too much time, like a whole long weekend in between the error and this and that, memory fades and you're going to fight a battle that is so annoying yes and maybe I, I, sh I should mention about one more thing here uh, if you can see this journey log form there you have a approach section which uh, you can select type of approach there and this field will be very soon updated because uh, th the approach types we have right now in Leon does not reflect uh, don't reflect the reality because there are a lot of new approaches and uh, there is a um, selection of uh, head-up display and head -up vision system, which is actually not a, an approach. It was a dirty fix, honestly. <laughs> but it will be separated, so that approach will be separated from uh, uh, head-up display and, and has an enhanced vision system. And in approach section, there will be more approaches which are up to date. I think it's coming very shortly as well. Yeah, and if, if uh, talk an approach, you got 2D and 3D and, and HUD and EVS and maybe not and la la la. And if you exactly. do uh, a CAT 2 trial period for uh, and your 30 sectors. All these will be there because we have a lot of questions from actually from Australian authorities, Australian customers as well, about uh, approaches because they, they need to have currency divided into 2D approaches and 3D approaches. And that's why it, this is the, the first step. The, the reason for uh, changing that is just to comply with that. So you can expect very soon an uh, update on approach type. That's awesome. And CAT2, you need to, or any any CAT2 plus whatever, you would need to have a tick box actually. Was it successful? Yes, no. So if there's a go around, you would need to dig out this and then report this to the authority and oh, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, yeah. yeah, with this go around, we don't have, we don't know how to solve it yet, honestly. I mean, the one way is just to monitor if uh, the alternate is different I mean, the destination airport is different than the, the, the destination from the plan. But uh, if there is a requirement to do go around checkbox, then we'll do it as well. But for the time being, it's not there yet. Cool. But so it's better than your Excel sheet and information island again. Yeah. Thank cool. You. Composition of flight crew. Um, yes. How many people can do this? Uh, you can see, okay, is there an, an operator policy? Uh, even a single pilot aircraft is only flown dual pilots, etc. Can be set there. Uh, was just one of the questions from sales. Oh, uh, if, if we just assign one person to, let's say, uh, an Embraer um, Phenom 300 flight, by AFM it could do this, but maybe they don't want it that way. So it can be set here. And this regulation, additional flight crews, of course, it's FTL and in there too. Uh, just, just, uh, just small update. If we will be, um, we'll give you this presentation after the event, so you don't need to make any notes. Just uh, it, it, it will be freely available for you. Um, so uh, don't worry. And I'm not saying this is complete, right? I, I just ran through it preparing this stuff and I think, oh, well that, well that'll work. Or from all this, I saw, yeah, th that was a tricky question. I remember that. So maybe there's even more. Okay. <laughs> Once more. Fix it. Uh, 
Uh, what else? More composition. FC, FC 100, by the way, you remember, this is NCC applicable. FC 200 series is any addition to commercial. So that is super basic stuff. License, etc. Yeah, this is something freelance tick box. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we have a discussion about this, yeah. that, right? That um, freelance doesn't mean that's just a person that you pick up from the street. Well, that's, that's actually, uh, it needs to be a pilot, and to being a pilot means I'm qualified somehow. Yeah, I think we will uh, we'll differentiate between endorsements for your internal uh, staff and endorsements for uh, freelancers, because right now endorsements, when you define endorsement, it's just uh, yes or no for, free I mean, freelancer, we don't track endorsements for freelancers, but we are right, they, they should have uh, license, medical and stuff. So um, yeah, we'll differentiate yeah, you that. you sent them to Russia or India, they need a visa, et cetera, right? It's, it's complicated. But uh, yeah, as I know you guys, right, freelance, yeah, yeah, it's the same stuff. So the first issue of the slide had the to-do list and now I know it's coming, the tick box, okay? And I think these are the absolute basic requirements that I come up with. Yeah, I, I can, I can give, give you also some insight about what is happening with these visas. The, the, the problem we face is that visa and, for example, passports, those are the typical endorsements we store in Leon. And Leon doesn't recognize the difference between actually the visa and, let's say, any, anything else. So we need to change the way we inter interpret passports and put visas inside passports, not as an endorsement. And then we'll be able to track visas for different countries. And for example, WARN um, operational uh, department or sales department that, for example, given pilot uh, has a valid visa for a specific country if the, if the flight is planned there. It's still under uh, our to-do list, but uh, yeah, we have a lot of questions about that. So we will have to rebuild the, the, the section around passports, that, that's for sure. And by the way, um, for your development channel, some softwares have a functionality to export, um, yeah, let's say a qualification sheet or whatever for the pilots. So anybody in the audience, raise your hand if you would like to have an exportable crew endorsement summary yeah 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 okay you heard it okay <laughs> i think we have no choice th no choice then to add it to Liam. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would just be great uh, if you have a safa inspector coming up there um, you mean uh, ex export to excel spreadsheet or to pdf or, or both a spreadsheet could be okay. could be by what cbt's what aircraft related and classroom training these three items boom list I mean, uh, the, the mobile app helped a lot in SAFA inspections on the ramp where you can access your uploaded PDFs right away. Like uh, La Grande Nation, I always ask for PBN requirements. The Germans are not good at this. The French know this and they always ask German operators, can you show me your PBN competency? Uh, it's not the best answer, right? So you go to your app, have it in there, carry on. Ah, uh, the designation of, yeah, uh, airports, airport recency. Um, there's a couple of C airports, of course. That works great. Uh, it also works great if you read your notums and you go to Nice and you do not take Can as your alternate because there's a notum saying no, no. And if you do this and you send unqualified personnel there, you're in deep shit because the French authority will read your flight plan and ask stupid questions when you land in Nice. Then, um, oh man, this is the Wi-Fi always popping up here as a window. And, uh, no, well, anyway, what else? This CRM training, um, of course, this is a very important, very basic stuff to have this. And this is before operating, etc. Specific to the operations, well, this is another story. But um, yeah, this endorsement and this warn if expired when adding a flight. 
Yeah, this, this tick box is also great because there's stuff that might not be super important, it's good to have, and there's essential stuff. So that tick box is for really essential, like this one. Good explanation to your authority. We do this, we track this, and we send out emails when this is going down. The composition of flight crew. Once you're done with your supervision, um, this experience tick box will be held. I think this is something that I did here. This is my profile. Um, this is, I'm office guy. I'm on every flight. I could sit there as line training examiner, the LTE is examiner. That means, um, according to ORO FC 230, a recurrent line check, most of you hopefully know, does not need to be a type rated guy. Uh, so. This is why in, in endorsements, um, most endorsements are deactivated for the LTE. So it's not popping up that I don't have a, a Honda Jet uh, line check or something, because I don't need one. Yeah. Yes, and two, two guys without tick box together, warning. Uh, yeah, I, uh, sorry, yeah. sorry, Hans. I just wanted to add one one thing about this section about ratings because sometimes there is a confusion about how to put flight crew uh, for the flight. If let's say we have line training examiner or um, line training captain, let's say, and then we have also captain position and first officer position. So in Leon, it works the best if let's say if you, you need to always put captain and first officer. Even if you have light training examiner, let's say, you still need to put captain there. So this guy on the left should be twice, should be should be put in Leon twice. First as captain, because CPT is the left seat basically and FO is the right seat. So every time you have the complete crew within the aircraft, there needs both fields needs to be filled out. And additionally, if let's say one of those is line training examiner might be a, a f first officer or might be CPT, then you need to put these again in the separate box. So just, just to make sure, just to have them both, uh, both f uh, fields should be entered. So just, just to make the statistics right and the reports right, because otherwise Leon is trying to fix that for you if you, if you make a mistake, but it should, the best approach is, to, is just to put this like that. Single pilot ops, yes. Um, I still did not implement somewhere the the uh, single uh, single turbine IMC stuff, but it's it's an exciting stuff, and I'm very glad this in this little thing you can track the requirements too. If you do this, yeah, we will add here as well 2D and 3D approaches because, as I said before. Australian regulators or operators require us to do so. I don't know if it's useful for European ones, but uh, there will be additional 2D and 3D um, approach type uh, currents to check. Cool. <laughs> and I try to dig into event-based training. Oh man, it's, it's getting more complicated here. Uh, yeah. Either pilot seat, same, right-hand seat endorsement does it, which is applicable to a commander. Airports as well. If we have some pilots who are qualified for the airport or either pilot seats and the others does not have this qualification, I will always get a warning. And that's problematic for us because I cannot check if uh, the pilot or uh, whatever who, who is planned, if it's current or not. And it's uh, it's like for f it's other things, other endorsement, airports, either pilot seats, and uh, okay. now uh, our company is uh, gonna take a second type, and I'm worried that we will uh, be having the same issues with that. If somebody uh, have a currency for one type and uh, the others doesn't, I will have all warnings for each flight. I see, so you mean uh, 
that warnings are produced regardless of, of the type that flight is happening on? Is that the, the, the thing you are you're yeah, saying? Yeah, like uh, if some, someone, if I create a new endorsement or uh, either pilot seat uh, currency or any kind of currency, and some of the pilots got them, they will be okay, they will be valid to fly the flights, but the one uh, who doesn't have this endorsement will be showing as a warning and for example, I the pilot seat, I have maybe like, we have 10, 12 pilots for I the pilot seats, so if I can, if I create this endorsement, I the pilot seats, the others will be uh, not current for any flight or so are you, you know saying what you would, I mean? would yeah. need something Same like, like a... Same for the Funkhal airport. We have been created Funkhal. Uh, we have mm, around uh, 10 pilots who valid for Funchal. And uh, if I have this endorsement and the others does not have this endorsement, then the warnings pop up all the time. Ah, so you mean uh, that if one pilot from the crew is able to fly there, you should not have the warning? Yeah, like uh, he should have the warning only if you fly the f that airport, Funchal. Ah, so you have the warning regardless of, of yeah, them flying yeah, to yeah, the yeah, different yeah. locations? And it's the same with the either pilot seat as well. So okay, we so stop using this uh, endorsement and functionality. Yeah, yeah, with this visa uh, stuff, as I mentioned before, we, w once we separate visas from a regular endorsement so that Leon can understand what's... Ex it's the same for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same, okay. same issues. Okay, same so, issue, so that I it's too general and it's annoying and you stopped using it because yeah, it's and useless. Uh, and uh, for example, we're using now Excel sheet and it's not yeah, sure. okay. you know. It's so we are just... The way we should yeah, do it. Yeah, good to know and, you know, thank you for the feedback. We'll uh, try to fix it. Uh, I think this one should be really la relatively easy to fix. The second one with the uh, visas, we need to rebuild it a little bit more so that Leon understands um, what actually the visa is, because right now it's just a regular endorsement, which is tracked for every single flight. But yeah, it's a good point. Oh, that's, that's uh, really cool. May I ask Thanks you so. something else? Uh, is there someone here with uh, two type in the IOC? Uh, Do you have any problems with something like that? Yeah, yeah so it's maybe it's we can. Uh, the regulation this also says um, that was my type of Orion. Now we, you have Global 5000 Classic. You got the vision. Bam, you're in it. Because now we will have uh, Airbus and Boeing, and now I, uh, we don't gonna get the qualification for Airbus to every, any, everyone. We only have we will only have only one Airbus. So maybe we choose 20 people. We give them this qualification but we uh, don't want that all others will don't be valid or uh, the warnings will pop up if uh, because they don't have this qualification. I don't want them to give a disqualification. And once I plan them for any flight, I will get the warning, ah, this person doesn't get the Airbus qualification, but why he's flying a uh, Boeing? Yeah, uh, once we have uh, this network of ideas, which is, um, Later on in the schedule, I think we'll, uh, yeah, that would be good to discuss and just to, uh, I can see this is a, a common issue here. So uh, if, if there are multi uh, um, aircraft types, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll need to record on that. Uh, your list is growing, huh? <laughs> which is good, which is good. That's what we're here for. So um, be in this window, this is just a fragment, of course, below here is what what kind of guy is it that you can choose and have this applicable to? So the right-hand seat qualification for us is, of course, only set to captains, period. Yeah, It's not something for a surfer, so they don't need that. Or then if you go to an airport that requires training, some do for the whole crew, some only for the commander. So welcome to the complicated world of aviation. Huh? So maybe you need a lot of tick boxes here. Right yeah, usually when you start needed. doing some really simple function, you know, uh, uh, then once you get into the forest, you can see how many trees are there. So this is the <laughs> typical example of that. 
So yeah, but we once we started to do some implementation, now we need to follow up on these. And of course, we'd like to have the function useful, not so you then need to use Excel spreadsheets. So we need to we need to address that for sure. Cool, very nice. Uh, single pilot, operate another pilot seat. We had this. Yes, that's what I mean. All right, this this little difference here. So that that starts with uh, tracking of um, differences cores going to the OSD data of your type, seeing do I need recurrent training left, right, or either one, or what is, is it a six month recurrent or a 12 month recurrent, set this up as endorsement, and then end up in, uh, we, we do have one owner who's got a vision and a, and a classic flight deck, just like uh, shown here, an express and a vision, and then he likes one pilot more, always fly with him on that type. This poor pilot doesn't fly on the classic anymore. He gets a warning for not being compliant FCL 60, you know, 90 day rules, etc. It just sucks, but that's how the regulations are. And published UT roaster. Oh man, I had uh, over the weekend uh, already a long discussion with two guys the four guys that, that do have a problem here. Um, free from fatigue. So what I like about this system is you can enter your proceedings. It shows red when the proceeding is too long in front of the flight. It's, it doesn't care if you proceed 48 hours from I don't know where on the globe after your flight because you're not a threat only to yourself but you're not operating machinery. That is great. Uh, the crew panel is just awesome for this, being very, very detailed. And uh, different AOC settings, all right, so we're going to hear about, hear about this. Works just awesome, great. Uh, FTL, crew member responsibilities. Long story short, as long as the flight is, and can we have this if this is an option that we start to calculate FTL or is uh, your, your service going to explode then? Uh, can you can you say again? I didn't get you. Yeah, like um, when when you want to plan a flight, but you're not sure, you, you don't have a confirmation yet, but you still want to know, does it work? I would need to make it a booking. Yeah, um, to, to see actually it was a uh, last discussion within the company. Uh, should we include options or not in FDL calculations? There are different voices about that. So, um, yeah, the conclusion was that uh, the last option should be um, included in, in EFTL uh, calculations so, so you can estimate if the, operation, the whole operation is valid. But if there are multiple options, then, then the, only the, the last one is taken into account, as I remember. I, yeah, we, we can discuss that later, but for sure we need to take somehow into account options because when you sell the flight and it's not confirmed yet, you want to be sure if the FTL is right. But so great flight from you know, state pilot, you will have the warning there. Ah, okay. So sometimes uh, we put the flight on as an optional, which is good and it's helping, but the flight time calculation is not appearing on that uh, when, it's the, when the yeah. flight is optional. It yeah, when if, if you use... Um, if you add the uh, flight straight away from the ops section, that is the case, yes. If you add the flight from the sales section, which is uh, the normal workflow, of course you can omit the sales section and just put it into ops straight away. But uh, for the time being, this check is built in the sales module, so before the confirmation you can check FTL. But uh, yeah, if the, there is necessity for that in ops module straight away right now, as it is in sales, we can probably add their, uh, this function as well, I guess. Right now it's in sales, yes, it's sales. Yeah, yeah uh, they ask OCC, but right now they have, capabili uh, they have possibility to, uh, to check it in Leon. When you add a flight within the sales module, it will let you know about uh, FTL right away without contacting uh, OCC. True, that's that's a critical one. Then of course the right AOC set if you have different ones like a national scheme for NCC is different. 
if you have mixed flight, like uh, I'm having a passenger flight, then ferrying to the next one or to maintenance could be NCC. <coughs> but just don't because regulations mostly say don't mix the FDL scheme, stay with the more restrictive one. Big fun. Yeah, there is a lot of confusion about the FDLs, but Piotr will probably let you know how complex that is oh <laughs> soon. Yeah, op opinions <laughs> everywhere, it's great. <laughs> uh, yes, we talked about this, right? Implementation is rocket science. Brain surgery. Hmm? Yeah, I would <laughs> say, yeah. yeah. Later on, we'll cover that in more details, but I think we have the best FTL engine on yeah. the market right now. Home base. Uh, I don't know, how do you guys do it? Um, for most planes at Emperor, we have Moscow. Nobody wants to live there, so they come to work and they don't have this 12 hours. Um, have this in your contract, yeah. Just for you guys to contract your home base or you end up in discussions. That Discussions that I see in the AOCs that, yes, but my home base is somewhere else. Or the authority says your home base is your airport, but you live somewhere else, so could you let us know how you got there? So we have to pay people to come to work. Does that? Nah. It's strange. And positionings. Yeah, we talked about this. So I tend to put the the date and the name is not crew, but I put the flight number in here, blah, blah, blah. Um, by the way, just came up. Um, could we have uh, uploadable files to positionings? Uh, just just because, yeah, let's say that you, you put your flight itinerary in there as you would have been booked. I think there are two general questions to ask, I, I must say. <laughs> One is, can we have additional note box? <laughs> everywhere and the <laughs> second one can we upload the file <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it shouldn't be any problem Hans I, I, I yeah. think we can add uh, a yeah. uploader here and there <laughs> yeah but you know positioning is the one that people lie about most so if you have your done decently including the flight booking you might you in there you want to uh, we have this checklist item means um, a checklist item where mm -hmm. Some of our customers are using checklist item positioning or uh, tickets to upload because you can upload documents to the checklist item. And um, some of our ah. customers are using this checklist item to upload tickets. Yeah, okay. It's, it's the old story. If, if that would be useful for you, then okay, okay, we can, we can add this here. Because essentially what we want to uh, convince our customers is to use this crew panel, which is the screenshot is from crew panel. And of course, to avoid any doubts, we will not get rid of crew duty, uh, crew duties page, because we had a lot of questions about that. There was uh, an idea to get rid of crew duties page, but oh no. yeah, everybody said that they are going to, <laughs> to kill us for that. So no, no, I would like to I would like to emphasize that we will not get rid of this page and more. It's under heavy development to make it fresh, clean, and faster because honestly, it's 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 too slow, and um, it's under development for uh, for this year for sure. We will release in the first half of this year, but I will cover that later. But essentially, um, yeah, it will stay in Lyon. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, 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 I know. It's a or is sure, it, okay, uh, or yeah. can you just customize for our company? For yeah, I think it maybe it others don't like this. For sure we can customize, but I, I must say when we started developing Leon, it was a dirty fix, a quick workaround, this PSN kind of type ratings. It's artificial because um, we will for sure add ability to add as many crew members being positioned as possible. And um, right now it's a stupid limitation, but we can easily solve your problem. But uh, uh, yeah, so shortly speaking, yes, it, it can be easily fixed. Okay, thank you. One more on FTL, split duty. 
Um, I saw, I don't know if I can switch it off, I didn't find it yet, but it does it in default, eating up your split duties, uh, you're quick at more than two per seven days. But that's, that's a great feature with these brakes in there, and you can switch them on and off. And uh, <laughs> it's still here, interesting. Um, I, I just had this in there, this nutrition thing is something that is very important to the pilots that always love food because FTP more than six, you need this. And um, why I bring that up is uh, we had discussions on the top management level with all these aircraft uh, managers needing to explain to the owner, billionaire, why the crew wants a sandwich. Yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> and maybe yeah. FTL more than six, bing, buy food. Just a reminder, friend. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it's really, yeah, and, uh, and that's why also if you enter your data after a flight, you're worn out, you're undersugared, you're tired, you easily make errors. By the way, anybody sugar? Coffee break or something? Yes? No? Carry on? Hmm, that's mixed. <laughs> you know what? I mean, the next thing is FTL records for home base. Yeah, let's let's grab a coffee. I think that that'll be great, right? It's so dry. Is that okay? Ten minutes or something. Yeah. Cool. Ready? Records of home base. Twenty-four month. That again goes back to. Yes, it's going to be kept even if it's shut down. I have this one or two operators that I possibly need to go back to this. We, we, we saw on another slide five years retention period, but this, this specific is asking for 24. So yes, a very clear statement from Leon in, in a contract or somewhere would be just great just to ease down here the authority. It just what question. So authorities are asking about that. If if you have a proof of Leon having this data backed up for a c appropriate period of time, is that correct? Uh, exactly, because if you say you close down an AOC, but you still have to ha to keep it. Um, so if if the decision is taken to close it down, people tend to just run away and. So that means your data is corrupted. So you're the last resort for having this covered. Yeah, so we so we can add this to our terms of service, maybe that would help. Yeah, I think so, yes. Just do a very clear statement how long, like make it, if possible, five years for all that stuff. So you cover really everything. Okay. Common language. We saw this before. You see these items pop up in different sections. Um, yeah, which is again the endorsement to track archaeo language proficiency, can communicate with each other. We have of course people, which is crew members, but then if you have operations or salespeople not speaking that good English, you run into problems again. So, but anyway, the regulation in this specific part asks for crew members, which is language proficiency. Archaeo taxiing of airplanes. La 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 la, it's an endorsement. Let's say for your maintenance personnel. Then the question came, um, we had a global in Berlin that needed to be taxied from the Lufthansa to some parking. And the commander asked me, can I taxi this airplane? And I said, well, the AFM said, to operate this airplane, it takes two pilots. So if you're showing up alone there to move a bigger plane, better don't but still for ground personnel, that could be an endorsement to cover this one. Ah, lovely, lovely. That was the hype, I think, 2018, right, with the burning Samsung phones. Um, great YouTube videos about this regulation here with burning bins. And uh, passenger information, 
I, I don't know if you sent that out to get a confirmation for the flight in writing by your passengers. Have this in there just to cover your ass to say, yeah, we told you about your portable electronic device. Get a signature on it. Uh, also a nice one. Uh, German authority brought that up, of course, for the NUT HLA. In the NUT HLA, you need um, survival information that can be easily accessible if there's a distress that you send out to every station something decent. So you might make up a card like this. One of these, this little plane really goes to Iceland, at least. There's a lot of water for this little plane, so we have this one available in case that we need to send it out. How does it look like? What to search for? And if it crashes on land, you know where to find what. Next page shows how to open the door, actually. This is, yeah. And and then next page is what kind of equipment is in there. Is there a dinghy? Yes, no. How much water, etc. And this is hidden with us in fleet documents. Ever did this that way? Yeah, it's it just, if this question comes up, do you have this? Why not have in Leon as a fleet document per plane? And your OCC or whoever does your dispatch knows where to find it. Uh, uh, long list. Right. Documents, zero. Weight and balance, for example, part of the AFM. Uh, every four years you need a physical weight, maybe you have an update with some items being installed like ADSB. Everybody does ADSB now. Everybody will have a little change in weight and balance because of that. And you can track this, of course, again with aircraft documents in the maintenance section. Uh, information relevant to the flight is on your servers. Bam. That's the best answer to this question. And a DG, that you need to provide information about DG with technical instructions. I think there was a bigger change in the last edition, 2019. But again, it's passenger information. If you have it in there that you remind your passengers about DG, blah, 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 <coughs> you're covered. Huh? Use of isolated aerodromes. Does anybody do this here, actually? Yes? Isolated aerodromes, you have one? Yeah, you can, but do you do? Uh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, because, because you need authority approval, etc., for this? Okay, well, we didn't dare yet. But of course, this prohibited here help. This is can for bigger aircraft, doesn't work. Okay, that works for Honda Jet and Citation, and, and then you do this and that, the, pre the briefing, check APG, etc. Same stuff, categorization happens just here. An isolated aerodrome. Is there any functionality in the, the airport database which is an isolated aerodrome? I don't think so, huh? No, I don't think so. I don't know either. <laughs> uh, could could be Seychelles, which is quite isolated. Praslin next door is quite small. So your alternate is somewhere in Africa. Single runway, terrain issues, yeah, fun. Okay. Adequate aerodrome. Again, yes, this is something when you talk about ETOPS 180, seriously, uh, to monitor this. And this is great news here with these, uh, that you give a specific date for the category, that you prove we looked into it and this expires, eh, whatever. And not going on for forever. Uh, the AOCs uh, in part C of your manual you might have a list of categorized airports, but uh, in my manuals I said, no, I don't, I put it in Leon, period. And it's, it's living there because it constantly changes by Notum or Alicante, the roof is on fire. The Notum says the movement area is closed. <laughs> what a coincidence, yeah. Next one, which is again BBN operations. 
Ah, navigation management. Yes, that was something that uh, Kamil actually wanted to talk about to be uh, done in, in endorsements <laughs> for the aircraft. You can set yourself reminders here. Um, from my perspective, what helps to get it on your journey log as a feedback if the database is done. Then what could be even more tricky on the airport database is you know the um, alternate is not allowed to be a PBN approach airport only. I think the French are great at this because the French have a lot of PBN approaches. You go somewhere, you pick the wrong airfield, you get a SAFA level 2 finding again. Hooray! Um, did I have any salvation for this now? Except for have this database management, you can take the maintenance uh, pages for the aircraft. What do we have here? Isolated aerodrome. That's why. Ah, yes. Best answer is two alternates possible. If one of these is, for example, PBN, you can you need a second one, but you will need to carry more fuel because your fuel calculation is for the one far away. <laughs> Destination is so important. FDS ops, how do you do this? categorize airports, look into capability of the airport. You do this? <laughs> good answer, good answer. <laughs> yeah. How Leon could help to, to keep a proper um, database about airport because uh, currently we can just add some notes in for, for an airport, but we cannot put any expiration date, um, for uh, for example, for a special note um, like Geneva, you cannot take it as alternate during weekend for the winter season. That could uh, help a lot in a, in a flight feasibility check, I will say, uh, stage. But yeah, we will add uh, because we have um, more than uh, more than a few um, inquiries about that. So uh, specifically, it will be possible to add a note for the airport <coughs> with the expiry date. And so when you are going to plan in a flight towards this airport, then this note would would appear. Is that something you are looking for? Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I think we are now in the process of designing how it should work. But in general, it will be accessible through the airport uh, uh, dic dictionary. So the data is not from ACU Quick because we pull the data from ACU Quick. But this data would be mixed with our database. So, um, but users will need to enter this manually. I mean, we will not pull it from somewhere. So if there is any note, I'm. Uh, ops guys will need to put this information to, to the database, but then it will pop out. Uh, so yeah, this is on our agenda as well, because as I said, we have inquiries about that. Steep approach. That is category again to cover this one uh, by type, which is cool. And same approach uh, for approval short landings. I, I never did this, but I think Lugano might be something. Um, that works for this regulation that you could do, but it's again, it's an SPA that needs approval and put it into airport category, for example. Mass and balance, integrity. Every six months, you should document that you looked into this. Is that boring? Just make a maintenance uh, thing for it if, if you document it, have it in Leon so you find it if the this question comes up. Uh, I also never heard of it, like 2018 in the audit this came up, I said, oh, every six months working as an operator like 20 aircraft, you work on all these 20 weight and balance, need to look into these, any errors in there, yes, no, and document it somehow. Aircraft documents. Really, that's it? We were just in full swing, easy. <laughs> Any more? <laughs> yes. 
It's a perfect fit, Hans. Oh, thank you. 